Hi guys, welcome back to Hike Oregon. I was originally gonna film this video outside because it's actually really sunny and really beautiful out today, but there are kids uh, in the backyard next door to me screaming and being really loud. So I thought that would be distracting uh, for today's video. So I'm doing this in my living room. Today I'm going to show you what I have packed in my homemade first aid kit. So I just have it in this little pouch here, packed full of stuff that I think is important for a first aid kit. Now you can buy pre-made first aid kits at like REI or any sort of outdoor um, store, Cabela's, that kind of thing. Um, but I feel like a lot of those first aid kits are overpriced for what you get. Um, they just basically have band-aids, anti-bacterial um, uh, wipes and um, cream and that kind of thing. So um, that stuff you can get really cheap at the drugstore or a grocery store and you can just make your own first aid kit. So I highly recommend that. Um, that way it's cheaper and it's also geared more towards what you are doing. If you are doing really, really dangerous hiking um, or uh, mountaineering or something like that, your kit might be a little bit different than if you just, you know, do pretty easy trails um, that aren't like super crazy dangerous or really remote. Everyone is going to have different needs as far as a first aid kit. So these are just suggestions, ideas of what you might want to carry in your first aid kit. So let me uh, get started. First thing I have packed in here is my emergency blanket. Um, so this is actually an extra large two person uh, emergency blanket. The one person ones are like half this small. So they're really small, really light, um, and they can definitely save your life if you are in a cold situation. Next thing I have is a bag of ibuprofen. I should probably resupply. Um, still have quite a few in here, but it's really, really handy to have if someone gets hurt or even if you're on a very long hike and your ankles get sore or your knees get sore, that kind of thing. If you take ibuprofen right away, that'll keep the swelling down and make you uh, feel a little better in the next days after your hike. Then I have a Ziploc bag full of different sized band-aids. So I have big uh, like square band-aids to put over a large wound. Then I have small band-aids like for a blister medium band-aids here and then like pretty large band-aids. So all sorts of sizes for whatever you may need. Then I have some tape here as well uh, for blisters or if you needed to um, tape a large bandage over a wound. This is this is really great. Then I have in another little Ziploc bag some cotton swabs and some um, Q-tips as well as a little sewing kit. Then I have my knife here. Uh, this is a knife. I believe we found it somewhere. I believe we found this um, on a trail actually. So I, <laughs> this is actually a really nice little really light, awesome knife. It's really sharp, um, stainless steel. So this is great, great to have. Then I have some antiseptic towelettes. I have two of these. Um, I should probably get some more, but this is just in case you get a cut or a scrape or some sort of wound um, that you would need to clean out. Another thing that I don't have because we used it on the Pacific Crest Trail hike that I need to resupply in here is some antibacterial ointment. Um, this, if you are hiking or backpacking for uh, a, a number of days, uh, a wound can really get infected, especially if you're not keeping it, you know, 100% clean, like you know, when you're backpacking, you are a little dirty. You're most likely bathing in lakes and that kind of thing. So a wound can easily, easily get infected. So antibacterial ointment such as Neosporin or something like that is really handy to have. So I need to resupply that in here. 
Next, I have some waterproof matches. Um, I heard that these can expire, actually. I was watching someone else's video, and they were saying that they tried to get a fire started with these that they'd had in their pack for a while, and uh, they actually didn't work. So I need to go ahead and try these and see if they still function. Next, I have a mirror, just a little mirror. Um, this can really save you in a survival situation. Um, you can do uh, SOS um, with uh, sunlight, like from the top of a hill and that kind of thing. Um, so really handy to have. Next I have a carabiner. I don't really know how useful this would be in a survival situation, but I carry it anyway. It weighs like nothing, um, but I have rope and that kind of thing in case you know, someone fell off a cliff or something and broke their leg and they couldn't get back up. I have rope and I think for that kind of thing, a carabiner could really come in handy. Next, I have this little um, keychain thing. <laughs> so in here, I've never had to use this, but in here is a, um, it's one of those plastic masks that you put over someone's um, mouth if you are giving them mouth to mouth like breathing um, for like uh, what do you call it CPR um, <laughs> so you don't get any diseases that kind of thing and next I have my potable aqua water purification tablet so these are the iodine tablets I got these on Amazon for like five dollars this is really, really handy to have, especially if you are in a survival situation, like you're on a day hike, all of a sudden you're lost, you are out of water, you obviously aren't backpacking, so you don't have your water filter with you, these will save your life. So these, I would put these in any first aid kit, one of the most important things, because you do need water. So then I have a fire starter. I do also have a lighter in my um, day pack. But, you know, just in case that got ruined or it's empty or that kind of thing, I can start a fire with this as well. So basically you just, you would take your knife, you shave the magnesium off here, and then you would start the spark by going like this. So really handy to have as well. Then I have some nail clippers, like really tiny ones. I don't really know how handy these would be, but I have them anyway. Um, and let's see, moleskin for blisters, Dr. Scholl's two things of moleskin. And last but not least, I have a large gauze thing. This is quite old. I should probably replace it. I've had this first aid kit for quite a while, but it's a four by four inch gauze square. So if someone has a large wound, I would take this tape that I had earlier, put the gauze, wrap the tape, there you go. And that is it. That's all that's in my first aid kit. Like I said, the Neosporin I'm going to replace. That is very important. And uh, let me know what you have in your first aid kit. Maybe I can get some more ideas of uh, things that you think are necessary to have in here. And if you are making your own first aid kit, maybe you got some ideas from this video. Okay, see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.